Well, good morning, folks. Welcome to Resurrection Morning. I hope today finds you encouraged in the fact that our Savior, Jesus Christ, is alive. There certainly is enough to discourage us today with all the bad news. This is the fifth Sunday that we have missed because of the COVID-19 virus. The number of cases nationwide is still on the increase. The number of deaths is on the rise. We're still in quarantine. We still don't know when things will get back to normal. But on this resurrection morning, I'm encouraged because my Savior is alive. Folks, he's not lost control today, nor will he lose control. I want you to take hope today, folks. I was um, listening to a message some years ago uh, of a preacher. He was talking about Jesus. He was talking about my king. He had a little snippet in his sermon and I want to give a little bit to you this morning. It, it was long. It was, it was great. But I pulled this part out of it this morning. I want to give it to you this morning. It says this, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find fault in him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. And Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. He always has been. He always will be. I'm talking about he had no predecessor and he'll have no successor. There was nobody before him. And there'll be nobody after him. You can't impeach him. And he's not going to resign. Folks, let's be encouraged today. Jesus is alive. If you have your Bibles this morning. I want you to take them and turn to the book of Matthew chapter 28. And uh, we'll be looking uh, at a section of scripture this morning out of Matthew chapter 28. And I'll begin reading in verse 1. Matthew 28 and verse 1. And the Bible says this, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did, did shake and became as dead men. The angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Let's pray. Father, I pray you'd take your scriptures this morning. You'd speak truth to our heart. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 28 uh, this morning. Uh, if you would, and uh, I want to preach a message that we've entitled An Empty Tomb. At that tomb that morning, what did these women find? Well, they found an angel. But folks, that's not what they were looking for. They were looking for a stone. They were looking for soldiers. They were looking for the Savior's body. What they didn't expect to find was an empty tomb. But folks, that's exactly what they found the empty tomb speaks to us a powerful message today. Take this away from the message this morning if you would. You must live your life considering the implications of the empty tomb. Folks, the empty tomb speaks three things to us today that I want to give to you. Number one, it speaks to us the power of Christ to conquer death. The power of Christ to conquer death. Folks, from ancient times, we've known popular conquerors. The world at times has been torn apart by tyrants and dictators. You think of some of them that have lived, that, it, that we have known and uh, studied in our lifetimes. Uh, we think of Nebuchadnezzar, and uh, he conquered Babylon. He conquered the Syrian Empire. Uh, you think of Alexander the Great. He conquered the known world in his day, the Caesars who conquered the Roman Empire. Napoleon conquered France. There have been others. We could think of the Hitlers of our time, the, the, the Joseph Stalins, the Karl Marxes, and there have been many, many more. But all of these men have been conquered by the same enemy, and that enemy is death. 
Oh, but I want to say to you this morning, our Savior, our Savior Jesus Christ, born in obscurity. You think about the Creator of the world who came to earth. Wasn't born in a palace. Was born in a stall, in obscurity, raised in poverty. The one who owns it all, the one who created all, the one who spoke it into existence, came, took on human flesh, and was raised in poverty, put to an open and shameful death. He was buried in another man's tomb. Folks, Jesus has conquered death. As the song says, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for us or his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. He arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. Folks, Jesus has conquered death, and he opened the grave, and he opened heaven for all of us today. What a hope that we have today in Jesus Christ, in the fact that he lives. Folks, today he is our hope. Hope was conceived at the cross where he died, Hope gave birth at the tomb where he rose. Folks, my hope today is not in a political party. It's not in any other entity. The Republicans, the Democrats, the moderates, the independents. It's not in any of those things. My my hope is not in the the scientific world today to to come up with a vaccine, to to do away with COVID-19. No, my hope is in Jesus Christ. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And folks, that's what gives me hope today. I know that Christ lives today because he lives in my heart. He walks with me, he talks with me every day as I go along the way. He shows me that the, that the things in this world today, the, the outlook may look uh, dim, it may look bleak, it may look dark today, but he tells me it's okay because I'm alive. Folks, here's the tragic note. If Christ had not been raised from the dead, our faith would be vain. If Christ had not been raised from the dead, our sins would not be forgiven. What a horrible thought that that would be, folks. If Christ has not risen from the dead, that you and I are still in our sin today. If Christ had not been raised from the dead, we'd have no hope and we'd be of all men most miserable. There's a song out there some years ago that was pretty popular and uh, and I can't remember just how it went, how all the words uh, of the song went, but it went something like this, that, you know, even if, if this, if, if, if the Christian life wasn't real, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, exchange it for anything because it's such a wonderful life. Well, that sounds good. But folks, my Bible tells me that if Christ be not raised from the dead, then we're of all men most miserable. If Christ had not been raised from the dead, death would conquer us all. If Christ had not been raised from the dead, the crepe of death would be hanging today on the gate of heaven. And, And what a... What a, what a disheartening thought that would be. But thanks be to God. He is risen. He's not in the tomb. Folks, he's not among the dead today. He's alive. In 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 20, but now is Christ risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, death by man, so also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. Folks, we can rejoice that Christ has conquered death today. Death is not an end, but it's an entrance. Folks, I've said this many times that death, all it is, is a vehicle, folks. It transports us from this world, this world of sin and and, and all all of its discouragement, all of its depression, all of its uh all of its sin and those things that would bring us down, all death is is a transportation. It's a vehicle that takes us out of this life into the next, into the presence of Jesus Christ. Well, I've thought about that. I thought about a vehicle. You think about the the fanciest ride that, that you'd like to own. Folks, won't be anything like the vehicle that transports us from this life 
into the presence of Jesus Christ. In Psalms 23 and verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Folks, we don't faith. We don't face death groping in the dark, but we walk in the light. All of this because of the unconquerable Son of God has the power to conquer death. Folks, He lives today. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful day this is. Resurrection Sunday. You know, it's almost a shame that we just think about it once a year on, on at Passover on Resurrection morning. Well, folks, every day, every day ought to be a resurrection day for you and I, for those of us that know Jesus Christ as our Savior. The resurrected Son of God lives within our heart. He, he communicates to us today, folks, that He's alive. And what a hope that we have. The power of Christ to conquer death. But the empty tomb also speaks of number two, the presence of Christ to control the world. You think about that, the presence of Christ to control the world. Folks, when did Christ, when did he come about? Uh, listen, folks, he didn't just come about in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago at his birth. Oh, no, Christ existed with Abraham. He existed with Moses and all of the prophets. In the days of his flesh, he walked with Peter, James, and John. But I want to say to you folks that he's with us today. Resurrection was not just an event that took place 2,000 years ago. He rose to walk with us today. He's alive. Folks, 2,000 years ago, he died on a cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And three days later, he rose from the dead. Death could not hold him. That was 2,000 years ago. But folks, he rose 2,000 years ago that he might walk with you and me today. He is alive. He said in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He said in verse 18, I'm he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. I'm he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Folks, that's our Savior today. It would do us good to make a habit out of saying he lives. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Christ, we're not alive. We could not live or exist. Folks, you and I live today because Christ lives. In Acts chapter 17 and verse 28, the Bible says, For in him we live and move and have our being. Folks, even the unsaved today can rejoice because Jesus is alive. If it wasn't for him, we couldn't even exist. For in him we live and move and have our very being. For some, Jesus is only special days. Christmas, Easter, and uh, folks, sometimes we get just tied up in, in, in these special days. And we have C&E Christians today. They come to church on Christmas and Easter and that's it. And then the rest of the year, we go about our life and, and we live it any way we want to and hardly giving a thought to who Jesus is. But I want to say to you folks this morning that I see him in the sunrise. Oh, listen, I like the special sunrise services that we usually have. And I'm going to miss it this year. But I'm going to promise you, I, I'm up, folks. I'm up in, in the sunrise and, and I'm looking to Jesus. I see him in the sunrise. I see him in the sunsets. Oh, I've told you many times, one of my favorite things to do is to go down on the river when the sun is setting and just see the glory of God as it sets on the river and it just lights up the skies. And, and oh, I see Jesus Christ in that. I see Jesus in a new convert, one who's just newly been saved. He's trusted Christ as his Savior and Jesus has filled his heart and that hope that he didn't have before. It's a brand new hope. He has a desire to read and, and to get in and to know the Savior even more and more. Oh, I see Jesus in a new convert. I see Jesus in a little child when he's when he growing and he's learning about, about the Bible and about Jesus and about the things of the Lord. And he has a desire to go to church and be in the house of God. Oh, we could learn a lot from those little children. 
who if the doors are open, they want to be there. They want to be in church. I've seen it in a little child and his desire to be in the house of God. I see him in a missionary going to the mission field today. And uh, what makes a missionary want to do that, folks? What makes a missionary uh, want to go to a, a foreign mission field, uh, leave his family, leave his home, leave his friend, sell everything that he has and go to a, mar a foreign mission field where no one knows him? And folks, quite uh, literally, they don't love him either. They don't get excited to see the missionary coming. But oh, God has filled his heart with a vision of lost souls that don't know Christ, that don't know the risen Savior. They filled him with the desire to go and tell others about Jesus. And they forsake all. And because of the risen Savior, they go to the foreign fields. And they'll spend their life telling others about Jesus Christ. What a blessing that is. The empty tomb has the power to control the world today, folks. God is still in control. And don't you forget that. He's no, no one's going to impeach him and he's not going to resign. He's still in control and he's in charge today, folks. Don't, don't lose sight of that. Now, I know it may get dark and, and the things may look uh, bleak uh, today. You may be quarantined in your house and, and told if you go out, you're going to be fined. Saw on the news the other day that uh, uh, Mr. Polling Cars uh, they've got a they've got a number set up out there that if you see people violating the rules that they've set, that you can call and report these people, folks. I don't know where all that leads. Uh, in in other societies, in other times, in other eras, that's led to some pretty difficult times. But I want to encourage you today. Our God is still alive. So the empty tomb speaks to us. Number one, the power of Christ uh, to conquer death but the, power, the presence of Christ to control the world. But I give you one more thing this morning. The empty tomb speaks to us of the proof that Christ will resurrect his own. The pr proof that Christ will resurrect his own. Folks, what I hope that you and I have today, because that Jesus rose from the dead, you and I will raise also. The same God who raised Jesus will raise us as well. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14, the Bible says this, And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by His own power. The God who raised up Jesus is going to raise you and I by His own power. Folks, I'm going to say to you this morning that the grave is not the end. Oh, listen, folks, you and I uh, have walked to the grave many, many times. I've walked there with, with so many of you. We've walked hand in hand together to that place. We've laid our loved ones in the grave. We've had to say goodbye for a time. The grave is not the end. Folks, we were created to live and live we will. Make no mistake about it. Folks, our loved ones in Christ, we've buried them. We've said goodbye for a time. Folks, we will see them again. Make no mistake about it. In John 11 and verse 25, Jesus said to the woman there, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Folks, that's the words of our Savior. I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Folks, that's not a dream. It's not some imagination. It's not some foolish fantasy that we have today. Those who have gone on before us today are alive. Make no mistake about it. You put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your guarantee that you will live with him forever. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 8, the Bible says this, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Folks, uh, this morning, let me say to you, the moment that you draw that last breath, the moment that your heart 
quits beating the moment that life leaves this body. For those of us that know Jesus Christ as our Savior, we'll go home to be with the Lord. What a blessed hope that we have, folks. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead guarantees that you and I will raise from the dead. But you say, preacher, this morning, how can this be? How can God know where they all are? All these, all these that have died in Christ and they've been put in the graves and their bodies have turned to dust. There have been those who have, have died at sea and, and their bodies have been lost at sea. Some of them have been, been swallowed up by massive whales or eaten by sharks or, 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 or whatever the case might be. There, I've known those who have been cremated and they've taken their ashes and they've gone out to the sea. They've flown over the sea in an airplane and they've dumped those ashes out into the sea. How can this be? Listen, folks, the one who made it in the first place is able to put it back together again. Make no mistake about it. God knows where you are. And he's not lost any. I read an example coming down to the end of this message this morning. But I read an example one day about a chemist who had a, um, he had an apprentice and he was working with some acid one day in his shop and he, he took a, a silver cup, he had it, he accidentally dropped it into the acid. He come to the chemist and he was very apologetic to it and he said, oh, I'm so sorry, I've, the silver cup, I've lost it. I dropped it into the acid and it's gone. And the chemist looked at the apprentice and he said, no worries. And he reached up into his cabinet and he pulled some elements out of his cabinet and began to pour it into the acid. And those elements caused the silver to drop to the bottom of the acid. And then the chemist took the acid and poured it off and was able to take the, the silver back out of the acid he took it to a silver maker and the silver maker remade that cup. Oh, listen, folks, if a silver uh, smith, if a chemist can pull silver out of an acid, give the silver to a, a silver smith and he can remake a silver cup, our God is able to put our bodies back together again, wherever they might be in the world. Philippians 3 and verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at what it says. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Well, listen, folks, these vile bodies that we live in today, make no mistake, they are vile they are sinful. They're capable of every sinful thing known to men. Oh, but when Jesus comes back, because of the resurrection, folks, he's either, number one, uh, going to call us up by the grave to be with him. He'll change our vile bodies at that time or at the rapture. He'll change us then, but make no mistake about it. Because of the, rap uh, because of the resurrection, folks, you and I will be changed one day. I know my Redeemer lives because of the empty tomb. And one day, folks, every knee will bow to Him and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, wouldn't it be so much better to bow our knee to Him today than to have to bow at Him in judgment and confess Him as Lord? Oh, I hope that you've already done that. I hope that you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior Folks, many times uh, when I do funerals, I end it in this passage of Scripture right here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. And it says this, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Now, folks, Paul starts out, and, and that sounds pretty rough. He said, look, you don't have to be ignorant. Now, folks, it's not wrong to be ignorant. It's wrong to stay ignorant when God wants to teach us and bring us out of our ignorance. Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. He's talking about those who have died and gone on. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now listen, folks. When we go to the funerals and we bury our loved ones, 
there's a sorrow in that. We've said goodbye to someone that we love and we're not going to be with them anymore in this lifetime. Paul says, I don't want you to sorrow as those that have no hope because folks, you and I have a hope today. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Our hope is in the resurrection. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We will not go before them. Look at what he says. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Because Jesus rode, the dead are going to rise again. Those that have gone to the grave, those that we have buried, those that we have said goodbye to, God says, I'm going to raise them again at the rapture. Then he goes on in verse 17, he says then, this, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I like that. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. With who? Those that have been raised from the dead. Then we'll be raised together with them in the clouds. Oh, listen, folks. I don't want to read into scripture there. And I've said this to you before, but I want to say it again this morning. I see a reunion time there. Then we, the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. I see a reunion day there, folks. We've said goodbye to our loved ones. We've said, I'll see you later. But one of these days, Jesus is going to call us, call us home. And we'll meet those loved ones in the air. We'll have a reunion time with them, with those that have gone on before us. And we'll meet the Lord in the air. I believe there'll be a time of reunion. We'll be ushered into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there shall we ever be with the Lord. And Paul would say, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Folks, do you know him today? I have great hope today, folks. I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. I'm not discouraged today because of COVID-19 or any other disease or any other malady that we may face today. My hope is in Jesus Christ. And folks, he is alive today. My Savior lives. I know that he's alive. He lives in my heart. He convicts me of my sin and of righteousness, and of judgment to come. He shows me that if I confess my sins, He's faithful and just to forgive me of sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness, and I can walk in fellowship with Him today. And I have all of that hope because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And folks, if you're saved today, that is our hope. But you may be listening to me this morning, and you may not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. I want to say to you today, that God loves you and that he sent his only begotten son to die for your sin and not just die for your sin, but to raise from the dead the third day. Conquer sin and death, hell and the grave and he's alive today. And if you're listening to me today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your savior and God has convicted your heart of your sinful condition you can repent of your sin. You can turn to Jesus Christ. You can call on Him and ask Him to forgive you. And today, He will forgive you of your sin. He'll birth you into the family of God. And then, folks, one day, because of His resurrection, He'll raise you and I to life eternal. And that's the hope that we have today. I trust that you know Him. And if you don't, and if I can help you in some way today, if you would just contact me, I'd be more than happy to share the gospel with you or any other need that you might have spiritually that you might have today. If we can be of an assistance, please don't have a, hesitate to give us a call here at the church. You can find our contact information on our website, and I trust that you'll do that today. Lord bless, and we'll be in contact with all of you real soon.